What's up, AP Art History students? Mr. Bruns here coming from the art studio. We're going to talk about our last piece in the prehistory period, and that's the Tlatlaco figurine. So before we begin to talk about the Tlatlaco figurine, we need to kind of go back and look at some history. So roughly 20,000 to 30,000 years ago, we have a migration from Asia across the Bering Strait, whether it's an ice bridge or a land bridge, either way we look at it, it's going to be a bridge. And these people came, some stopped where the, you know, the North uh, Pole is located and others continued on. These are hunting and gathering societies and they would fan out into North America. They would then go into Central America and they would finally stop in South America. There they would cultivate, they would become an agricultural society and they would begin to cultivate the three sisters. Remember that, put that in your note, the three sisters. They are corn, that's maize. Our second would be beans and our last would be squash. Other than the three sisters, they also cultivated the potato, cocoa, avocados, and tobacco. Another thing we need to remember about the society is that they didn't have any beasts of burden. They didn't have horses. They didn't have uh, cattle. They didn't have oxen. But they did domesticate dogs and turkeys and guinea pigs. Yes, they domesticated guinea pigs and they ate guinea pigs. Now you're going to look at your guinea pig in a different way. They also domesticated the llama. Now you think that a llama would be a beast of burden, but it can't. A llama really can't hold more than 70 pounds of gear, and after 70 pounds is on the ground. They also domesticated the camelid. We've looked at the camelid canine sculpture piece, the camelid, and that would have been our alpaca. Mesoamerica. What is Mesoamerica? Well, Mesoamerica extended from central Mexico well into Central America. And there they would develop the key characteristics of a civilization. Yes, they developed, you know, a, a writing system. They developed astronomy. They created complex calendar systems. They even created mathematics, particularly like the Maya, who are sort of in the classical period, but the Maya created the number zero, and they did this in isolation. I think that's something to be remembered. They did this without any contact with any other civilizations at their time. Another thing that the, these Mesoamericans created was metallurgy, and they worked with things like gold and silver and copper. And from these three metals, they were able to create some of the most beautiful jewelry of their time period. But most weapons were made of bone, they were made of stone. And if you can get your hands on it from the volcanic regions, abyssidian, and that was 500 times finer than surgical steel. Now the time period for the Tlatlaco figure is called pre-classical. That is more of the formative time period. And why is this? Well, this is driven a lot by Mayan agricultural finds. And it's, we take that period as when the Mayan, using their writing system and their dating system, we can determine when they first started to create stone monuments. So that becomes the cut point for classical period. So the Tlatlaco figure sits in the pre-classical art period of Mesoamerica. So let's get down to it. Get that paper out. Get your pencil or pen ready. It's time to take some notes on the Tlatlaco figure. So this is work number 10, the Tlatlaco female figurine. This was found in central Mexico at the site of Tlatlaco. And this particular work has, was created between 1200 to 900 BCE. So it puts us in that formative pre-classical period of Mesoamerica. Form-wise, what we have here is a completely handcrafted clay-shaped figure. It was created by hand, most likely made of terracotta. What we see are some exaggerated proportions. We see wide hips, we see a pinched waist, and in comparison to the very small feet and hands. And there's absolutely no details on the hands or feet. Now, if I wanna make a comparison, if we're talking about the wide hips, I would probably choose the woman of Willendorf as a good example of an exaggerated portions. We see detail on the face added through incising. That means I'm taking some sort of wood instrument and I'm shaping the eyes or I'm shaping the hair with some sort of incising tool. And obviously this piece must have been painted because there have been chips with paint 
found on it. And there are, as you can tell, there are some colorations to it. Content-wise, this is a female nude figurine. It is double-headed by cephalic and it may symbolize a concept of some level of duality. And in this was an important component of Mesoamerican shamanism as well as tradition. Again, content-wise, if I'm talking about this, we see wide hips. Maybe this is representation of some sort of fertility, pinched waist, uh, elaborate hairstyle seems to be important to the region itself. It might be a similar motif, as we can also see other pieces like this. And the pose seems to resemble that of a dancer. Contextually, we're looking at the Valley of Mexico. This was inhabited by the Tlatelolco people. They were here way before the rise of the Aztec Empire. Again, we are looking at plant domestication. Happens right around 5000 BCE. We see settlements, agricultural communities, roughly around 2000 BCE. And many of these early cultures created nude female figurines to promote maybe survival of a society or, uh, you know, fertility because there was a high infant mortality rate of the region. The motifs of animals from surrounding environments were found on other Tlatelolco figures, such as the one we're looking at right now. So back to our original uh, figurine. This was found in a grave in Mexico City by miners. And so we're having this sort of common uh, element found in a lot of our prehistory art that there's some sort of funeral ritual going around in different parts of the world. We're either finding, like if we look at the Jade Kong and, it's, and the bee, they're found in uh, funeral spots for people. So there's somehow some sort of connection here. It could have also been there for, for the promotion of fertility or the promotion of survival. But it also suggests that maybe these people were fascinated with the supernatural, the physical deformity and the interpretation of the supernatural by natives. So this could have been some sort of female deity that had some sort of dual purpose. There you have it, AP Art History students. That's the Tlatelolco female figurine, part of our prehistory, part of unit one, 4% of our overall exam. So you want to be preparing to see it possibly in the multiple choice section. It could be in one of the 15 minute essays. So make sure you're taking good notes. If you missed anything, just kind of go on back. Hey, if you like what you're seeing, click on the subscribe button down below. Thanks for listening. I want to thank where I get a lot of my information from, Art History by Marilyn Stokestad, AP Art History Review Guide by The Barron's Company. Also, smarthistory.org is a great place to go check out, all you AP Art History students. And finally, Khan Academy. Thanks for all the help. Thanks for watching.